If you're in IT, you most likely will know this situation too well. The feeling of being overwhelmed by new technologies and projects, being frustrated because there is so much to learn, and finding yourself confused where to even begin. Yes, that's a real problem, and to be honest, I often have the same feelings whenever I want to learn something new. And also, many people are asking me about this in the comments of my tutorial videos. How do you master IT skills and stop being a noob? <laughs> And I know it's hard because the reality is that we have so many technologies, tools, solutions, fields and trends in this fast changing industry, no one can master it all. And with the recent evolution of AI, well, don't expect things to change. <laughs> but I refuse to see this as a purely negative thing, because the beauty of IT is that it has something exciting to offer for anybody. Regardless of your background or your experience level, if you're passionate about technology, you can easily make the jump from being a noob to an IT pro. <laughs> Not in everything, but at least in an area you enjoy. And as I've been working in the IT industry for over 12 years now, believe me, I've experienced some of the same struggles and challenges like you, but I found out some secret strategies that I've collected over these years and they always help me to learn and achieve new skills fast and efficiently. Today I'd like to share some of them with you so you can enjoy learning new stuff in IT, make consistent learning progress and find your way through this jungle of technologies. <laughs> let's get started. Okay so let's start with the first tip I have for you to really master your IT skills and this is if you would like to make consistent learning progress you have to choose a main field and stick with it. Something you enjoy and where you like to specialize in. And these can be all sorts of fields we have in IT. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific role. So I would choose something broader like programming or system administration, cybersecurity, networking, or maybe support and project management. Yeah, Whatever you think you'd like to learn more about. And let me tell you why this is so important. So when I started to work in IT, I was hired as an IT service technician. And like I've worked for small and medium sized companies and doing all sorts of support tasks, yeah? Installing and deploying new servers, creating users and permissions in Active Directory, but also setting up networks and firewalls, installing Outlook on Workstation, fixing problems with printers, which I absolutely hated the most. <laughs> And I really learned a lot, but the point is, these topics were so all over the place that I never really got to an advanced level in them. And for me, it became really frustrating at some point. So that's why I decided for myself to make a career change and specialize in a certain field to really master it. Note, your decision doesn't have to be carved in stone, of course, yeah? So you can always like mix and switch between these fields from time to time, like if you find out, well, I'm not so good at programming, yeah, perhaps I'd like to switch into the cybersecurity field. Sure, no problem. But it is still important for your learning progress that you find out what is your main interest and stay in that field for a while. That's definitely helping you to make the best progress and you are naturally learning technologies that always complement each other. Okay, so once you know the field you're interested in, for making a consistent learning progress, you have to set yourself a goal. And this is the second tip to really master IT skills. And what you define as your goal should always meet your current expertise. Like if you're a complete beginner and you wanna land your first job in IT, don't set your goal as to become a pen tester or a DevOps engineer. This is just too much. I often see this, by the way, in cybersecurity, especially hacking, because this is such a cool job, right? Everybody wants to be a hacker. And yeah, perhaps this is your dream, but it is not a good strategy to set this as your first goal. So instead, if you're a complete beginner and you pick the field of cybersecurity, better start with something small, like learning the fundamentals of operating systems, yeah, Linux, Windows, or maybe networking fundamentals. Try to learn more about TCP, IP protocol, routing, switching. And then when you have achieved that goal, you can set yourself another one and then work towards your dream. Also, when you set yourself a goal, you always have to define an action too. I'll give you a quick example of my life, yeah? For example, when my goal is to do more sport, well, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> but I know that I'm lazy and I always find new excuses to not do it. So my strategy is to be very precise with defining my goals and actions. Like, I want to lose 10 kilograms of weight, so this is my goal. And as an action, I do 30 minutes of cardio every other day, yeah, for example. 
Honestly, when I'm thinking about it, I probably should apply some of those tips to other areas in my life too. Always remember, it doesn't really matter how much time you invest, the more the better of course, but be realistic here and try to be consistent with that. So that's obviously helping a lot more to achieve your goals. Okay, so enough of the theoretical stuff here. Yeah, let's come to the fun part. And one of my absolute favorite tips to master IT skills is you have to get some hands-on experience. I've seen so many people who want to get into IT or land a certain job and they got all sorts of certifications like the A plus certification, Google IT support professional, Network plus, LPIC one, but still can't find a job. Why? Because those certifications say nothing about your real abilities or about your expertise. To really master any field or skill in IT, you have to have some hands-on experience. It's more important than anything else. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that IT certifications and courses are not valuable and could not be a great source to learn new skills, but without any practical experience, they are just theoretical knowledge. That's why I invest so much time, effort and also money in my home lab. Not because I want to self-host everything or set up a private cloud. No, it's a virtual playground for me to challenge myself and learn and apply new skills. I'm constantly building new stuff, breaking things, fixing problems and repeating that over and over again. Honestly, I think many people underestimate this power we have in IT because not every job offers you this opportunity to get real experience with a hobby project at home. I mean, of course, you, there are things that you can't really get experience with, like setting up millions of clients with automation or setting up a powerful sand storage for a hypervisor cluster. Sure, yeah, but most of the fundamental knowledge that really matters in IT, that can still be achieved in a home lab, maybe just at a smaller scale. So don't wait with this, yeah? start building your home lab as early as possible and trust me, it will skyrocket your abilities and IT skills. Tip 4. When you start a home lab and you would like to master IT skills, it is important to identify the right skills and projects you should invest your time in because you will face many distractions here and there which aren't really helping you to achieve your goals. What do I mean by that? Well, let me give you an example. Like if your goal is to become a junior Linux sysadmin, for example, so just try to search for Linux content online. Just do that. Of course, you will most likely find some really good stuff here, such as courses and trainings, tutorials and guides, but you will also find a lot of fluff, like what is the best Linux distribution for beginners or the best Linux distro of 2024, or maybe on YouTube you will find videos about free and open source privacy stuff or the best OS that you never use or look at this here, don't use Linux, just use Windows. <laughs> No offense here, yeah? I'm not saying that this content is a complete waste of time or it's useless to talk about that. But if your goal is to actually learn Linux and get into professional IT, yes, it is useless. <laughs> this is really, really important to understand for beginners. It doesn't necessarily help you if you know how to install Arch Linux or if you're the best hacker and use Linux as a desktop OS. Honestly, don't care too much about this distracting online content because this is more entertainment than valuable educational stuff. If you really would like to master a technical topic and quickly achieve your goals, look at what IT professionals have to learn about it. Yeah, A good resource is always certification-based training, like for Linux, the LPIC1 or LPIC2 certifications, or for DevOps, the Azure certifications. But also educational tutorial videos such as I do here on my channel most of the time. You can of course watch or you can buy books about those technical topics. You can read blog posts, you have so many places to go. You can even use AI to learn and understand certain topics or find out what's important to know in your field. The beauty in IT is we have so much of this available and accessible for free, so the content is already there. But you have to do a good research on what is relevant in your specific field of the industry and what are just distractions or entertainment content. Next tip, and this is one of the real secrets that had a huge impact on me mastering my skills. Because when I started to specialize in network security a couple of years ago and I was researching the right technologies and skills, doing some testing projects at home and so on, I found out that I somehow need to keep track of everything that I'm learning and also review some of those projects. Because in IT, 
There is so much you have to learn and you will most likely forget about stuff. And that is why you should start building yourself a knowledge base or a form of documentation for your learning progress. And really try to do that as early as possible. For example, I'm maintaining a GitHub repository called Cheat Sheets, and this is where I'm writing down any code snippets I found, some technical documentation and command reference for all sorts of tools and technologies that I'm learning. So everything from application-specific knowledge over to cloud technologies, Docker, Linux, security-related stuff, I'm always trying to write down everything that I'm learning. Sometimes this is just a one-liner about a certain problem that I've solved or a table with some useful commands that I need to remember. This is so incredibly helpful, especially to keep that stuff in your brain and remember it the next time. By the way, if you like, you can look this up on GitHub, yeah? It's publicly available and yeah, feel free to contribute to it or use it for your personal projects. One thing though I would not recommend, and this is just copy and pasting it. It is important that you write down what you have learned and not just take somebody else's work. And don't do that afterwards, yeah? do it right when you're working on the project. Otherwise, you don't finish it. Trust me, I've made this mistake <laughs> too often in the past. What you should also avoid is making it too complicated and thinking too much about it. I mean, sure, you could even think about setting up a WikiJS homepage for building this, but honestly, I believe it is much more effective to use simpler tools. It's not relevant that you build a fancy documentation platform for your projects. It is just important that you write down the stuff that you're learning. So use simpler tools like Apple Notes, for example, Microsoft OneNote or Notepad, if you like. Well, okay, maybe not Notepad, <laughs> but I think you get it. Yeah, don't invest too much time into the tools. Better invest it into learning and writing, okay? And yeah, that's basically all that I do to master my IT skills. I know there are some topics I have to do separate videos on, like we've just briefly talked about IT certifications and trainings, or maybe I'll do more detailed videos about my documentation or home lab projects. I'm sure you will let me know in the comments what tip inspired you the most and what you want to learn more about. So leave me a comment down below. And don't forget to give this one a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more content for IT professionals. And thank you all so much. A big thanks goes out to the Patreon supporters on our community. You guys are just amazing. And thanks for watching everyone. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.